Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really great arcade game video for you this evening. We always take this after we finish up a game and we're taking pictures of it and everything so we can advertise it. And we shoot a video while we're at it just so you can see what we got. We don't forget about our YouTube friends. We know you people are out there uh, anxiously awaiting every new video that we upload. So here's one for you this evening. This is Sega's 1985 Choplifter, also known as an evil hard game. And you guys know I'm not the greatest at uh, playing some of these. This one's just tough. The way I judge if a game's too tough is if you can't beat the first board, it's pretty tough. I mean, I might be able to beat the first board. We're going to try here in a minute, but I don't, I don't know. It's tough. But anyway, this is a kit cabinet. It wasn't in a... Uh, it, it, it did come out in a dedicated version, but you hardly ever see that. We had one one time, but this is a kit. Um, basically, you would buy this and convert one of your games that wasn't making money anymore into Choplifter, which is a cool game. I think it's earned pretty good money as well, but this one's kind of strange because it's in a, a track and field cabinet. I'm not sure what year track and field came out, but Choplifter came out in 85. Um... So why in the world would they convert a chop a, a track and field cabinet to choplifter, which would have been an old game probably? I think I think track and field came out after that, but I don't know. Maybe I've got my uh, maybe I've got my numbers wrong. But you'll notice on all of the copyright stuff, it says Dan Gorlin, 1982. That's because it was a computer game that they uh, modified for the arcade. Um, but it's a cool game, and it's kind of one of the iconic Sega arcade games. It's not a real valuable game or anything like that, but a lot of people have fond memories of it. But it's usually in a hundred different cabinets. You see it just kitted into all kinds of stuff. So, And I think it earned a little bit, so even if this uh, was done years later, it probably still earned a little bit of money. Because, hey, you're flying a helicopter. How fun is that? So the art's very minimal. Um, you've got a couple things on the control panel. Um, Sega logo. Sega had, I, well, I guess it would have been a little different, but a lot of their control panel overlays had this kind of theme to it. Um, over here you've got one smiley face for one player or two smiley faces for two player. Uh, it's ambidextrous, which is nearly useless because I'm left-handed and I play just like a right-handed person plays. So I don't know uh, why they even did that, but they did. Um, so one button changes your direction that you're flying and can also make you kind of pivot where you're in the middle so you can drop a bomb and then uh, the red button is strafing or bombing so it's real simple basically you leave the uh, base and fly off to uh, save hostages so whenever you see hostages you land they hop in like that and they go I go I go I go I go I think they do I think it's on this version. And then uh, you uh, try to get the heck out of Dodge. You can see how much stuff's going on. And you try to get back to the base. And if you land at the base, they unload all of your uh, hostages that you have rescued. And uh, you have a quota on each level. Look at that. He did it. Good thing I filmed that because I might not be able to do it myself when I'm <laughs> playing it. But... This particular cabinet, oh, the track, the title screen is pretty cool. Check it out. Awesome. Reprogrammed by Sega in 1985. This is a cool little cabinet, I think. It's a, it's a clean little kit. I mean, obviously, it's in a track and field cabinet or a uh, hyper sports cabinet. But who cares? I mean, it's a, this is about as. You, you, Choplifter is going to be in the wrong cabinet every time you get it, pretty much. So. Why not have it in a track and field cabinet? I think it looks pretty good in this one. Um, but uh, we've had this for years. We've probably had this game five years or so. We had it in storage for a long time, and we finally got it out the other day and uh, just happened to run across it and thought, hey, we could finish that thing up. We've had it too long. And uh, so that's one interesting thing about it. The other interesting thing about it, if you look, the monitor has kind of like a yellow tint to it. That's the tinted plexiglass that's on it. Um, I don't know what some some uh, operators would use this weird plexiglass that had kind of like a yellow tint um, 
kind of like it's an 80s thing you know it's like those old blue blocker uh, sunglasses and so that's what it does it cuts down the blue and makes everything look yellow but it's kind of cool and it's kind of vintage so we said to heck with it we're gonna leave it and it's easier to leave it than to replace it right so we kind of like it it's vintage so that's that the monitor actually looks a lot brighter if you look behind the uh, like if you open the back door and check it out but whatever in somebody's house who cares so there you go that is oh I gotta show you the marquee check out this marquee this marquee is what you call awesome so I'll get it all in look at that that's about as awesome as it gets so we'll go over it cool Sega logo which was always a great logo, you know. Chop lifter in the 3D, the 3D letters. Look at that. Very bold. <laughs> and then copyright Dan Gorlin, 1982. And it's got that. If you look at the way the the text is done, the font is done. Like the the way it's kind of. Um, bigger down here under it and stuff it looks like they just kind of copied and pasted it on there back in the day when they were mocking up the art very vintage and again it says 1982 but this was all done in 85 82 was just when the original idea for the program was made and then you got a couple I guess POW guys over here wanting to get saved you've got a copter here you've got a tank kind of behind the art part of the art looks cool and then over here you've got an explosion and a chopper and another chopper in the back and they're hanging on for dear life man and that really sums up the whole game that's what the whole game is about but I, I, I always thought this was one of the coolest um, so there's a certain style of these marquees that's like this where it's kind of junky you know it's kind of thrown together and you can tell that they didn't spend a fortune on it they kind of just did their thing and it's simple uh, line drawings it just looks awesome I think but I think that's a really good one this this whole game is kind of like a B title you know it's like a B title game but it's one of the best B title games it's really fun and really hard like I said just a real simple concept you just try to pick up the hostages and fly them back to the base so it's not really like an assault mission or anything you're not trying to really kill anybody or blow up anything you're just trying to get the hostages and get them back that's the whole point of the game and you get to shoot and everything but it's just to try to stay alive so um, and I hope I can beat the first board so I can show you the second level everything changes a little bit and it, as you go on it gets uh, there's a couple of different levels and things I think there's five levels, something like that. I've never been past the second or third one, I don't believe. But So there you go. I will set up the tripod, and uh, we'll play some 1985. Be back in just a second. You're going to be seeing a lot of that whenever I play. The how he just got shot and crashed and burned happens all the time when I play. This is a tough game. I mean, Dan Gorlin lives on in infamy. So basically that's the whole thing you go and you try to rescue the hostages. So we're going to try it out a little bit. Let me add some credits. There's no free play on this one. One or two play start. All right. So we'll see how good I can do. So one button shoots and one button turns you around. Ah, come on. <laughs> Come on, immediately. All right, so the joystick makes you go up, down, left, or right, and that button turns you around. You can 
only get, I think, eight people. Well, we got five. I think you can shoot the hostages too accidentally if you're just strafing the ground like this. So I got that one. Okay. Are there more? Yep. Ah, I was trying to get straight where I could drop a bomb on the tank. Game over. Simple as that. Okay, we're going to play it again. Oh, man. Come on. can't just go balls to the wall because you can't see like you can't just go full speed because you can't see what's going on three so that's eight. Oh, it tells you at the top see it says load eight I don't think you can just fly like this. I think they'll get you if you do that. All right. Oh, come on. So now I got to go farther. Oh, come on! Look at a guy waving a little flag or something. Help me! Help me! God! I don't think you can just fly full speed because it, uh... Look at this. Look at this crap. I thought he killed me. I was killing him. I, I, I shot one of them and killed him. my fuel I think he I, I think he oh, I shot my last safe guy the hell with it <laughs> screw the cheese let me out of the trap Is 
that enough? No. way home folks okay I'm gonna credit that up some more <laughs> 20 hostages you got to be freaking kidding me okay I'm gonna try to go farther out the first time So if you just press the button once, it just easily turns you around. I've been having a problem where I turn around too much, so I can't, I can't pass the guys. care folks this is tough but this is like this is a well-designed game i mean this is a cool game it's fun it's just a simple concept but it's really fun see if i if i land like that I can go up and immediately drop bombs. Oh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Come on! Okay, I'm gonna I'm try to land straight up and down so that I can uh, drop bombs easier. I keep hitting the wrong button though. 20 hostages. <laughs> Come on! All right, that's all going to be trouble on the way back. Well, <laughs> if I ever even make it back. Help me! Help me! <laughs> and then I landed on one! Oh wait, there was one. Okay, so you can't land on your people. Oh, came in a little hot there. I mean, let's be realistic. I was going to die anyway. All right, we're going to play two more games. And then I'm, I'm not going to prolong the pain anymore. I'd like to beat the first freaking board. Come on! Man, how can it be that tough? Let me remind everybody, this is the very first board. Thank you. 
beep. You can't fly this at the top the whole time. It don't work like that. I guess I'm just going to, have to slow down. The guy got shrek. I couldn't I couldn't stick around any longer. I need seven more. I saw it coming. And there's not even anything to continue with because you can't, you know, I can't even beat the first freaking board. Alright, I'm going to try to go slower. on board was lost folks look lost eight all right so now i'm gonna try to just go farther i already killed all them people anyway so i passed that one i guess i got to shoot it killed 13 hostages so far. I guess if you lose 12, you can't possibly win. So there must be 32. Come on, folks. Do not have all day.
I only got six. I think there's eight each time. I need six. I need six, folks. I might be able to do it. I've only died once. I've only died twice. Set the uh oh come on you got to be kidding me I gotta reset the camera all right I had to reset the camera because uh, the tape was too long what am I even doing here same thing oh nope what huh? oh no come on people I need to continue here folks No continue. Those evil, evil bastards. Oh, come on. I mean, that's just ridiculous. <sighs> so there you have it. Choplifter. Very tough game, in my opinion. I'm going to keep practicing it, but this, this video has been long enough. So I'm going to take off. Now, by the time you see this video... We may have already sold a choplifter. It may have flown over to somebody else's house and is in their game room infuriating them at this moment. But if you're looking to buy a game, check out our website, lionsarcade.com. We put up uh, pictures and prices of all of these games that we get in. Every time we get one, we put it up on there. Check it out. Even if it's years from now and you're not so sure if it's still up to date, go check it out. I'll bet it will be. Um, and if you're local, you can come by and see them in person. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, which is about 15 minutes south of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, just stop by. We're open every day, but Sunday we have a building full of these arcade games. Really cool ones like this one, too. Um, but if you're not in the area and you're not looking to buy an arcade game, well, just subscribe to us here on YouTube, and you can see more of me getting very angry at these uh, hard, old... Uh, vintage arcade games. We'll film more videos of all of these cool games that we get in and we will see you on the next video.